Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bullets from the Bible. I'm back for another Monday. This week we're going to talk about some fun stuff. We've been doing a lot of work up until now. <laughs> Nobody likes to talk about technique. Everybody likes to talk about gear. So we'll kind of back off the gas pedal a little bit, and we'll talk about something fun. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Greg. You ready to have a fun week? Yes. We'll start talking about the stuff that everybody else wants to talk about. We'll stop talking about this pesky technique stuff. You know, that's boring. We're going to talk about equipment selection. That's fun. <laughs> Well, we're going to start with probably the, the most requested one, and that is cartridge selection. And we're going to spend a whole week on this because there's, there's a lot that goes into it, and there's, there's a lot of things to consider, and more, more so than I think a lot of people realize. What do you think of when you think of cartridge selection? Uh -huh. Man, there's a lot of controversy out there. There's a lot of just everybody has their own opinion. Um, a lot of people, including myself, are emotionally attached to certain cartridges and and that kind of can skew our our view on which one is which one will work best. But I don't know. Many cartridges as there are people. There's a whole bunch. Well a, how do you go about it? When you're gonna pick I, one I ask you what experience you found to make it work best. <laughs> and I say, okay, get me a barrel in that. Yep. <laughs> Well, that works too. And there's a, a finding somebody with firsthand experience with the thing that you're thinking about doing is always a pretty big deal because there, there could be some little tiny things about servicing that cartridge that might not be real pleasant for you in your position. Right. And so that's what we're going to talk about this week is that whole cartridge selection thing. What it looks like on paper isn't always how it really works in real life. And so, yeah, that firsthand experience is absolutely necessary. Absolutely. Or extremely helpful anyway. Right. Well, we're going to try to unwrap a little bit of this this week, make that cartridge selection thing a little bit easier for people and have them be less susceptible to getting led around by their nose when it comes to the marketing around some of these cartridges. Yeah. The process that you need to go through with anything new always um, cartridge selection is no different uh, obviously if you're thinking about a new cartridge you're either thinking about a new rifle or you're thinking about rebarreling a rifle that you've already got because if it's new to you then obviously you have no experience with it um, cartridge selection as a function of your application is always a good place to start so you try to decide well, what am I going to do with this thing? So today we're going to focus on that aspect of it just a little bit about how you come to the conclusion based on your application. So obviously, if you're a colony varmint shooter, if you're, you're shooting prairie dogs or you're shooting ground squirrels or something of that nature, that's typically going to require a different cartridge than if you're going to go on a buffalo hunt. Uh, <laughs> so some of this... Yeah. <laughs> Some of this is very obvious. <laughs> now, that's not to say you can't go and shoot prairie dogs with your buffalo rifle, but I wouldn't recommend shooting buffalo with your prairie dog rifle. <laughs> right. <laughs> a knowledge of interior and exterior ballistics is a pretty important part of making a selection based on your application because you have to have some concept of terminal performance. You have to know what kills if you're going to be making a selection for a hunting application. Um, and the type of hunting that you're going to be doing is, is extremely important. Um, when you look at guys that are going to be going sheep hunting, for instance, they're going to be in some very difficult terrain that is very difficult to judge distance with your eyes. And so they're always looking for a relatively light rifle that has some very flat trajectory, but yet has enough killing power to, to successfully kill a sheep. And so six millimeters 
is really kind of the, the king amongst the sheep guys. And the reason for that is, is you can get a, a very nice lightweight rifle chasing sheep. Well, they're, they're way up there. <laughs> and so it's extremely taxing on your body to go after them. And the pack and everything that you're using, the, the rifle at its weight, I mean, if your rifle weighs more than eight pounds and you're going on a sheep hunt, that's going to be kind of tough on you. So um, having a nice flat shooting cartridge is very important there. Now, conversely, um, everybody likes a flat shooting cartridge. However, if your payload demands that you need to have a heavier bullet weight in order to accomplish your task, well, then you need to consider that as well. If you're going to go on a dangerous game hunt in, in South Africa or something, um, and you're going to be shooting at lions and cape buffalo and all these different super hardy very thick bodied very thick skinned critters then you're going to need something that has a lot more punch and so your knowledge of exterior ballistics is going to take you through this now this is actually extraordinarily available for people today in so many different forms just about everybody has a smartphone with a nice big screen on it and you can download any number of ballistic calculators. Now, I, I uh, prefer the Applied Ballistics app on my phone. If I'm using my phone, I like that. Um, it's a great little app, and you can just plug the BC and the various uh, different factors of your bullet into the, into the program. They actually have a bullet library also. The bullet, yeah. You can just look the bullet up, and then you can apply a velocity to it, and you can get estimates for a cartridge that you don't have in a reloading manual or off of the internet. And that, something that will get you in the ballpark. So you can just compare cartridges in the ballistic calculator and see. Let me, let me remind you, you're getting estimates. You're not getting specific load data that way. Yes. <laughs> Very important. What you're looking for is a ballpark figure of general generally accepted velocity and performance with certain bullets in certain cartridges because the cartridge selection only goes so far. You can run very lightweight bullets in the same cartridge as you can run heavyweight bullets in that cartridge and the performance is going to be massively different. So a 22 Creedmoor for instance, you can run up to a 90 grain plus bullet in that thing and it'll be going relatively slow or you can run a 40 grain bullet in it. Um, you can grab the lightest 22 cal bullet that you can find and stick in it. Um, the performance that you're going to see with those two things is going to be monstrously different. Nothing similar about it at all. So when we talk cartridge selection and exterior ballistics, what that bullet is doing once it leaves the bore, we're actually talking about the bullet more than we're talking about the cartridge. Now, the cartridge and its capability to launch that bullet to the velocity that we're expecting and to do so with a nice, gentle, wide accuracy node, that is all obviously what we're looking for. Very desirable in that way. We'll have to wait for Daniel to come back here. Hopefully, he throws back up. There he is. So, when we're, th when we're talking about what cartridge to use and how the bullet actually affects this, we have to pick a good cartridge, but we also have to pick the right bullet for that cartridge. And that is, is significantly, probably the most significant factor in this whole equation of cartridge selection. So you ask, well, how do you, how do you come up with that? Well, experience goes a tremendous way there having used a bunch of different bullets and a bunch of different cartridges, you start to gain an appreciation for what each is capable of. And then you can apply that experience to the manufacturer's advertised ballistic coefficient, run the numbers in the ballistic calculator. You just grab that app on your phone, whichever one you like. You set up a profile for one bullet, and then you set up a profile for another bullet. And you can do that for as many different cartridges as you want. And what you're looking for to compare are things like velocity at X distance. So if you're going to be pronghorn antelope hunting out in the plains 
and you want to make sure that you've got enough terminal performance to kill a pronghorn at, let's say, 500 yards. You'd make your comparisons based on the amount of velocity and the amount of energy left in that projectile at that distance. And these ballistic calculators will tell you that. They'll also give you a good estimation of what kind of drop and what kind of wind will be affecting those particular bullets in those cartridges. Obviously, you want something that's nice and flat shooting, but you also want something that's going to perform very well in the wind. Now, the windage aspect is something that I would strongly encourage you to consider, especially if you're going to a place that you know to be windy. Uh, that's a, a fault that a lot of guys make when they come out here to South Dakota and want to shoot some prairie dogs. They've got all these laser beam cartridges like a 220 Swift and 22250 and 22 Creedmoor and all these things. And they're all shooting 45 to 55 grain bullets. And they're going really fast. They're 4,000-ish uh, foot per second in, in some cases, sometimes a little more. And so their 300-yard trajectory is just a laser beam. It's like two or three-tenths of a mil of elevation Right. But then the wind starts blowing 15 miles an hour, and they're holding a mill at 300 yards for wind. <laughs> wind is quite different in South Dakota as it is in Tennessee. I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> yep, you sure did. Our very, cal our very, our very windy days are their calm days. It's just we 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 rarely have wind anything like what what is normal out there in South Dakota. So therein is a a very a very good point in that. You can uh, compensate for trajectory. So if your trajectory is somewhat poor, at least it'll be predictable. Now, there's aerodynamic jump, which will affect low BC bullets much more than it will affect high BC bullets. And uh, that aerodynamic jump is an effect where if you've got the wind blowing from left to right and you've got a right twist barrel, your round is actually going to fall with that wind. Um, and it, the opposite effect for the opposite wind, uh, uh, a right, right to left wind. Um, so there's a video on our on Primal Rights YouTube channel where I talk about aerodynamic jump, and it's about 22 long rifle at close distance specifically. This same effect happens with center fire, so you can go and watch that video to brush up on on that. But the kind of moral of the story is is that you can account for elevation. It's very easy to account for elevation. You can calculate for it, and it's generally speaking going to be very predictable. Now, the wind, that's the variable that's going to cause the most misses. Most people that miss things are going to miss them left or right. They typically don't miss on elevation very much, uh, as long as they've got an accurate yardage to the target. And so when you're making your selections about what bullet to use, you want to favor the wind aspect heavily. Because anything that can get you a, a more forgiveness in, in the wind is going to be a very big deal on making hits precisely in the real world. And that's true with any cartridge, any bullet that you choose. Um, lightweight bullets going really fast tend to have poor BC, and thusly they're affected by the wind. Now, this is something that I see tremendously when I'm shooting 17s. 17 caliber bullets that are average grain weight per the caliber, so something that's 20 grains, let's say, um, they are affected by the wind by a monstrous degree. Now, I was shooting 17 WSM just yesterday, and we had a good solid 15 mile an hour, 15 to 20 mile an hour wind blowing, and my little prairie dog, Steel, from Target Hanging Solutions, is a little miniature prairie dog, he's only about that wide, 145 yards of the 17 WSM, that's a 20 caliber bullet, um, or excuse me, 17 caliber, 20 grain bullet, traveling 3,000 foot per second from the muzzle. I was holding a mill of wind in order to hit that thing. Now, if you compare that to something like my six dasher with a 105 hybrid, I'm going to basically aim right at it. <laughs> I mean, they'll be like, maybe a tenth of a mill of wind in that, in that whole situation. It's really going to be a, a, not even a comparison. Um, so when you're thinking about cartridge selection, make sure you actually run the numbers. 
and you consider your application. If you need payload, well, then you're going to have to go with a heavy constructed bullet. It's likely going to be traveling slower, and it's going to give you some poorer trajectory, but it's trajectory you'll be able to account for. A relatively easy variable at that. And we'll expand more on this cartridge selection thing as the week goes on, and we'll give you some more variables to consider, but this is a good start to the conversation. Cool. Greg, I got a common verse. It's a verse everybody knows, but it's a verse that I, as well as I believe others, continually need to be reminded of. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, he says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, it will be opened. Sometimes in our life, we are where we are because we forgot to ask, we forgot to seek, and we forgot to knock. And if we'll just slow down a minute, take the time to turn to God and ask him for what we need, seek what we need, and, and, and what is it? Ask, seek, and knock then we'll, we'll get what we need. He'll give it to us because he's promised he will. On that last part, it's very important. Knock. Knock. That's right. You have to do something. <laughs> all, well, yeah, all three of them require action. Asking requires asking God, but seeking, seeking too is, is one that requires us sometimes to get out of our comfort zone and go out there. And then, and then knocking as well. They, they all three require action on our part, but all three come with a guaranteed result from God. Thank you for joining us for Bullets from the Bible. We'll see you tomorrow.